In past few weeks we have seen evolution of locomotives and benefits of railways. Today, we will look into dedicated freight corridor of Indian railways. Rail freight transport is a crucial component of global logistics, playing a significant role in the movement of goods across countries and continents. To understand more about the dedicated freight corridor, we will ponder into this topic through these questions. So the first question, what is Dedicated Freight Corridor Project? Dedicated Freight Corridor or DFC for short, is meant to create a safe and efficient freight transportation system in the country. Currently, the Western DFC connecting Haryana, Maharashtra and the Eastern DFC connecting Punjab, West Bengal are under construction. The combined length of the Western and Eastern DFCs is approximately 2,843 kilometers. North-South, East-West, East-South and South-South DFCs are in planning stage. So now the next question is, what is the history of dedicated freight corridor and currently what is the status of the same? In April 2005, Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, announced the project for Indian Railways. Later in 2006, the Eastern DFC and Western DFC was announced by Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. Immediately in the same year the dedicated freight corridor corporation of India Limited was incorporated. By 2007 cabinet committee approved to take up the preliminary work like the land acquisition. In 2008, the funding of amount 282 billion Indian rupees was approved for the DFC project. In 2009 the civil work for Eastern DFC started. As of now the project has received five extensions after missing several deadlines in 2014, 2017, 2018, 2020 and 2022. In the 2021 the Rewari, Madha section and Madha. Palanpur section of total length 659 km in western sector has been inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi for operations. Following the trend in the 2022 almost 650 km of freight corridor lines were commissioned and in 2023 till October almost 700 km of freight corridor lines were commissioned. In total almost 90% of the construction work in the eastern and western dedicated freight corridor has been completed. Now the dedicated freight corridor map looks like this and the future is like this. Now, why do we need dedicated freight corridor? As the country pursues its goal of looking beyond a service-based economy, to become a global manufacturing hub, India is looking forward to significant savings in the transit time of goods and commodities, resulting in better efficiency and cost savings. The DFCs are not only an alternative to roads and the Indian railways, but also complement the existing modes of freight transport. Effective use of these corridors will help reduce logistics costs and accelerate the development of new industrial hubs, says Ram Praveen Swami Nathan, MD and CEO of Mohindra Logistics. The National Logistics Policy launched in September 2022, seeks to cut the current cost of transporting India-made goods internally and to the world by half, by the year 2030. Logistics costs in India are 16% compared to 10% in China. Besides, a rail-based solution is an environmental-friendly mass transport system. Railways are about 12 times more efficient in freight traffic and 3 times more efficient in passenger traffic compared to road transport. As the Indian economy transitions, with economic growth and sustainable development as twin goals, mobility will play a key role says J.B. Singh, director of move -in Express, a B2B logistics player. Singh adds that, it is important to have greater transparency in the operations of the DFCs to help build trust with logistics providers and shippers. This could include sharing data on train schedules, freight volumes and transit times. As per estimates, the logistics sector is required to grow by 25% to meet the requirement of moving goods. 
Since 1951, the railway sector's share as a transporter of freight traffic has declined from 86.2% to 27% as on 2022. DFCCIL proposes to reclaim the railway's share in freight traffic by running faster, heavier, higher and longer trains on the upcoming corridors. DFCCIL is working on detailed project reports to ring fence the entire country, with railway corridors spanning the country's eastern to western coasts, it will cover almost 4,300 km distance. Delivering resources to any part of the country in a jiffy could be a reality soon. So the next question is, what are the features and benefits of dedicated freight corridor? The freight corridors are expected to decongest the existing Indian railway network. It will increase the average speed of goods trains from the existing 25 km per hour to 70 km per hour. It will allow running heavy haul trains and carry an overall load of 13,000 ton. The corridor will facilitate the running of longer and double stack container trains. DFC will connect the existing ports and industrial areas for faster movement of goods. The DFC project is an energy-efficient and environment-friendly rail transport system as per global standards. It will increase the share of railway in freight transportation, and at the same time will reduce the logistic cost. So, let's see, which countries have dedicated freight corridor? Many countries have extensive rail network for transferring their freight but no other country barring India has a dedicated freight corridor. But here we are not considering the new Silk Route freight corridor created by China, which is actually a cross-country freight corridor. Rail transport in Russia, runs on one of the biggest railway networks in the world. They have third longest by length and third by volume of freight hauled, after the railways of the United States and China. In overall density of operations, Russia is second, after China. Freight trains in China are primarily used to ship bulk cargo. The important cargo is coal, which accounts for 58% of total rail freight tonnage. Other items shipped via rail are, ores, minerals, grain and fertilizer. Despite impressive passenger statistics, freight rail mod share in China trails other countries like USA, where some 40% of all tonnage is shipped by rail, according to US Federal Railroad Administration. In 2021, rail freight transport in Europe made up 5.4% of freight transport performance. Germany has the highest rail freight transport performance in the EU contributing around 31% of the EU total in 2022. The main types of cargo transported in Europe, by rail freight include, hazardous materials, special cargo, consumer goods. Now let's see, what are the features of the dedicated freight corridor which makes it different from regular freight transport? Dedicated freight corridors are proposed to adopt world-class and state-of-the-art technology. Significant improvement is proposed to be made in the existing carrying capacity by modifying basic design features. The permanent way will be constructed with significantly higher design features that will enable it to withstand heavier loads at higher speeds. Simultaneously, in order to optimize productive use of the right-of-way, dimensions of the rolling stock is proposed to be enlarged. Both these improvements will allow longer and heavier trains to ply on the dedicated freight corridors. Much higher axle load wagons are expected to run on DFC, compared to Indian railway tracks. This will significantly increase throughput on Indian railway. In summary, the improvement of railways is instrumental in the development of a country by fostering economic growth, enhancing connectivity, reducing transportation costs, promoting urban development, and contributing to environmental sustainability. It serves as a backbone for a well-integrated and efficient transportation network, positively impacting various sectors of the economy. That's all we have for today. So. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please click the like button, give your comments and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.